Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be talking about borage and some of the ways that I like to use it. And I would also like for you to share with me your ideas. If you already have borage and you're using it, how do you use it in your day-to-day -day life? Do you use it for cooking? Do you use it for skincare? What do you put it in? How do you cook with it? And all that kind of stuff. So I'll be talking a bit about what I do. And if you haven't seen my video from last year, I did a video just on the health and medicinal benefits of borage and also the garden benefits. And I'll go ahead and link to that video right up here. And I really think that if you've got a garden at all and or if you are also a beekeeper, borage is one of those very, very important plants. It's super easy to grow. Bees just love the blue and purple flowers. And it is said, at least I read somewhere at one time, to help increase the honey production of your bees. So that's one of those great plants to have out there. And it is just a great attractor to any pollinators. I've seen that Shadell over at Delectable Mountains did a little Facebook video and she had hummingbirds working hers over. Now we get hummingbirds, but I don't think I've, I recall ever seeing them work over the borage. Uh, but uh, they do like the nasturtium flowers and I do have hummingbird feeders for them too. So, <laughs> but uh, I thought that was a very cool that, that she was showing that. And anyway, so I want to show you what these flowers look like. So I'm going to show you a few pictures from both this year and previous years of borage in my garden right here. And then down here, here are the some of the flowers that I picked so far this morning. And I'll be showing you what I plan on doing with these today. And then right here are the borage leaves. I usually like to harvest them. Like if I'm going to use them in salad, I, I usually like to get them a little bit smaller than this one. But this isn't so bad as long as you chop it up real small. Uh, this is a bigger size one, obviously, but they can get even bigger than this. I think... Let's see here. I've already ripped some of these up. What I do when I dehydrate them is I just, I rip them, the bigger ones, into pieces like this and then put it on my trays. And that just helps them dehydrate a little bit faster. One thing that you'll notice about the leaves is they're rather pokey, very, especially along this, the back side here, this ridge, that's where it's the pokey est. But once they're dehydrated up and used in things like soups and stews and whatever, uh, you're not going to notice that. It's not going to be an issue. And then again, in salads, if you chop it up really small and you have it mixed in with a bunch of other stuff, especially if you use the younger leaves, you'll either not notice it at all or it'll be just very minimal and it probably won't bother you. Now, borage has a really nice cucumber taste. It tastes really good fresh, and I've eaten the leaves just like this. I've even taken bites off these bigger leaves and chewed them up, and it is a little pokey and it can be a little bit uncomfortable, but the flavor is wonderful, and it's really, really good for you. Just packed full of lots of great benefits. As you'll see if you go watch that video, because I'm not gonna go into all that right here, but just good benefits for overall health and also medicinal benefits and those medicinal benefits also apply topically so you can dry up your leaves like i have here and you can use them in an infused oil in fact i'm thinking about adding the borage and the flowers too to my infused oil so that infused oil i'll use that's got the different uh, herbs in it in particular pansies calendula marshmallow and then maybe that i'll start adding the uh the borage too that goes into my lip balms and into my skin cream that I use on my face. I use it on my feet. I use it on my hands. I use the skin cream. That's, that's all I use for anything, any dry skin, even on my lips itself. I don't always just go grab a lip balm. I use the skin cream on my lips as well. And it's really great. So because the borage also has really great skin benefits, I want to start infusing my oil with that too. And then I also use it in my soap making, the dried borage leaves. And I have a couple right here. 
this is the one I need to make another batch of because this is my last bar up on my store and somebody's interested in buying more of these. And then this one's lime vanilla borage. I just like to throw in different when I make the soaps, especially the ones that go up on the store. I like to have each batch have some kind of herb from my garden that is, um, it gives it a bit of a scrubby type nature, but it also has skin benefits that are going to be really good for you too and that's all I use I just that and then essential oils is all I use in my soap they're completely natural I don't use any un, unnatural any fake uh, colorings or scents or anything like that it's all 100% natural ingredients in there and so uh, with the borage flowers today what I want to do is I'm going to be making a water kefir out of these and I want to see how it turns out. And what I'll do is uh, I'll probably post an update picture of this on the community page. So make sure here on YouTube and also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, and I'm curious to see if the water will turn blue at all because I've never tried it with just the flowers. I did make a water kefir with the borage leaves and flowers. And of course it turned more green, but it turned out really good. And it does have a bit of a cucumber taste. Another option, for your water kefir is to add mint to your borage. A mint borage water kefir is really good. Or if you don't have uh, kefir grains, or you're not interested in making the water kefir, which is a like a fermented drink. It's it's a it's very good for you. It's good for your gut health. But you know, and it's a little more on the it's a little sweet, like soda would be. But if you want just a good flavored water that's also really good for you, just put the borage and your fresh mint into some good filtered water like a rain water, spring water, uh, well water and refrigerate it for a few days and it makes a really uh, refreshing and very healthy water for you just to drink on a hot day. I mean it's really good uh, and make a great iced tea. Now the other thing I'm going to do this year, this is new and I don't know why I haven't done this yet because usually I just dehydrate up a bunch of borage leaves and then use them in very, mostly in like soap making and things like that. Um, but fresh, I'll use them in meals. Uh, you can stir fry them. Uh, they're in, and like I said, they're good in salads or just eating fresh. But this time I'm going to try to get several jars, quart jars dried up because I want to add at least one to my mixed greens blend. Why I haven't done that yet, I don't know. But, um, and at the end of the season, I will do another video like I did last year of what's all going in my mixed greens blend. And I'll do a different one because it's going to be a little bit different than last year's. And I will go ahead and link to last year's video right up here so you can see what, what went into that. But this year's is just going to be a little bit different and not just because of the borage. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's what I want to do with this. And also, uh, I'd like another jar for using as a tea, just as is. Um, maybe I'll add it to my tea blend or add some to my tea blend. But I would really like some just separate to make as just a borage tea using the leaves. And the flowers too. You can throw the flowers in there as well. And so I want to have quite a few jars so that I can do a few different things for them and then also still have plenty dried left over for infusing oils and or making soaps with. And so there's just a few of the different things that you can do with boards. This is what I do and I expand as I go and I'm always coming up with new ideas and so even though I've been growing the borage for years and using it for years it seems like every year I come up with a new use for it. Now a couple other uses that I mentioned in that video that I linked to up here is in the garden uh, it makes a really great chop and drop. You can just if it gets I just let it grow wherever it wants to grow because it self seeds easily and it will come up everywhere but the nice thing about it it has a very short tap root it's only it gets fat but it's only about that long even at its when you have this huge plant it can get stalks that big around it pulls up out of your ground so easily and you can just chop it up as is and throw or you can just throw the whole plant down on your garden and let it just nourish that soil and protect that soil. Usually I'll kind of tear it up or chop it up. And then the other big thing I like to do is feed it to the chickens. The chickens love the borage. It's really good for them. And um, 
some people say that borage can have some toxic effects on birds. It might depend on how much you're feeding them and the size of your birds. My chickens, they're good, so they're buff Orpingtons, they're good meaty birds. They don't have any problems with it and it's been very good for them. They've just flourished when they eat that borage. So it, one lady was saying that she fed it to her quail and her quail were dying uh, whether or not it was from the borage, I can't say. It could be because the quail are smaller. Like hummingbirds, you cannot give them a lot of minerals. They can't have too much minerals. It will build up in their body and eventually it will kill them. That's why you have to use plain white cane sugar when you're making your uh, nectar for your hummingbird feeder. You don't want to use a blonde sugar that still has molasses in it too high in minerals for your uh, hummingbirds. So you got to be very careful about that. So that could be what the issue is with the quail. But for the chickens, I've had no issues. They love it. So just look into it for yourself. At any rate, I know what works for me. And uh, and again, if nothing else, it's just really beneficial to your garden all around because the bees love it, the hummingbirds love it, and then you can just turn around and feed it right into your soil. So even if you didn't eat any of it straight or use any of it in any kind of skin-related thing or make tea out of it, uh, you can still benefit your garden and feed your other garden vegetables using the borage. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. And again, don't forget to share with me some of your ideas and things you like to do with your borage down below. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.